I think we've solved the problem, and that by um, changing the law, we will somehow make them go away. Okay, well, on that note, we can move on to our very last story of this, the first podcast of 2013. And uh, one of the dominant political figures, undoubtedly of the next year, will be our good friend David Cameron, the Prime Minister, who who is uh, who's relaunched his coalition with a great enthusiasm this week. Uh, Michael, Michael, you had a, a thought or two about our esteemed leader, I think. Yeah, but most of them are unpublishable. Um, <laughs> but no, it's just that he he intends to show to win the hearts and minds, and this is quite astonishing because he's the most unpopular man in Britain at the moment, and uh, if he continues. To win in England, it's only going to be because they've done a good enough job smearing everyone else. So I don't know how a man in this position is going to win anyone's hearts and minds. He's hated in England as much as he's hated in Scotland, I think. It's mad. I, I don't know, Andrew, are you going to be convinced that he's going to win your hearts and mind to the, your heart and mind to the, your heart? So you Doctor Who. Uh, is, <laughs> are you convinced that he's going to win your heart to, to the unionist campaign? For the union, Amy, I, I, I must say, I don't think that David Cameron is quite the person to persuade me that that it's worth being better together, uh, I'm afraid. Um, although, you know, he's a, he's a brazen-nosed man, as, as you know, so he's, he just lives opposite the, 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 the place from where I'm at in Oxford, and I must say many of the people I've met in brazen nose were very much like David Cameron. So you think maybe it's not his fault, maybe he's a victim of circumstances, and it was a question of, of, of nurture and not nature, and beneath his rubbery exterior there lies the beating and true heart of a decent fella caught up in a terrible Tory nightmare. <laughs> I doubt it. No, or no, not so kind. And Dominic? Um, uh, my my um, respect for David Cameron is sort of in the negatives, but I, I think that what best sums him up as a person is is something that a friend of mine said to me the other day in Sweden, which is he's a kind of second-rate Mr. Darcy, and <laughs> uh, he, he has the kind of all, all the positive aspects of breeding without any of the charisma or uh, morals. So, um, <laughs> sorry, Bertie Wooster without the intention to be a pro chevalier. <laughs> I think I think it's uh, you know, a terrible he's, thing is. People keep on referring to him as Flashman of, of great <laughs> George Donald Fraser creation. You think he's not Flashman? I mean, Flashman's I mean, he's a scallywag and a you know a bastard and a, and a creep and a coward and a but he, he's got pizzazz. I mean, David Cameron mm. is, is a very second-rate insult to Flash. Oh, oh, I, I read a great I read a great article about Johnny Marr today in the Guardian, and it's actually Cameron's greatest achievement because he's the only man that's got Morrissey and Marr back together because Marr. <laughs> Mar, t- Mar tweeted, "If you, I forbid you to like the Smith." And Morrissey said, "I agree." On <laughs> and that was the only time they've sort of spoken together in public for five years. And so that's that's actually his most remarkable achievement. It's creating coalitions of interest where they never were before. Where, where he's, he's following the Thatcherite and what Francis of a CC maxim about where there is discord, David Cameron will bring harmony, albeit harmonious agreement. He's not perhaps the kind of politician that you could want to vote for. Okay, well, on that cheerful note, maybe we should just close off there uh, and thank Dominic for coming on. And it was really interesting. I thought the stuff about the Scandinavian insight from someone that actually has not just been there but lives there for a substantial amount of time was something which we don't get much of in Scottish politics. And I think it was really interesting to to have a a more serious-minded think, perhaps, about what some of these loose Scandinavian ideas might mean in practice and not mean in practice. So thank you very much for coming on. Thank you very much. Uh, and we'll be back as usual uh, next week, Michael and I and some other mysterious person has yet to be identified to discuss what's been going on uh, and uh, various neglected and, and over chewed over uh, issues in Scottish politics. So uh, I you hope you'll time. join us then. See you later. Bye. Seamless, seamless cool. quality.